Randall Monroe. What if two? Additional serious scientific answers to absurd hypothetical questions. How was the universe made? What is the meaning of life? What happens to us after we die? And how many humans would a Tyrannosaurus Rex need to eat to reach its recommended daily caloric intake? This blink can't tell you the answers to the first three questions, but it might just give the answer to that last one. Randall Munro is the creator of the beloved web comic XKCD, as well as a physicist and a NASA alum, and he believes there's no such thing as a silly question. Since 2012. Munro has been inviting readers of his blog to send in the most absurd hypothetical questions they can think of, and answering them as seriously and scientifically as possible. This blink collects Munro's answers to some of the strangest questions he's ever received. Yes, like that one about the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The answer, by the way, is about half a human adult or one ten-year-old child. Or if you want to avoid a scenario where you're eaten by a T-Rex and there's a McDonald's nearby, approximately eighty Big Macs. What would happen if Jupiter was shrunk to the size of a house and placed in a suburban street? Do you want the bad news first or the good news? Well, let's go with the good news. Jupiter is roughly the same density as water. If Jupiter was house-sized. So let's say about fifty feet wide, it would only weigh two thousand five hundred tons, meaning your new neighbour isn't about to mess around with your gravity by forming a black hole. The bad news is that Jupiter isn't actually made of water. Before Jupiter was well, Jupiter, it was a big diffuse cloud of gas floating through space. Then gravity caused this gas cloud to collapse in on itself. When gas is compressed. It gets hot, seriously hot. Jupiter, much like Earth, is formed of a thin, cool surface layer that keeps a lid on a scorching hot interior, as in tens of thousands of degrees hot. Like all things that are blazing hot and super compressed, Jupiter's interior wants to expand. It doesn't, but only because its own super strong gravitational forces counteract that impulse. Shrink Jupiter down to the size of a house, and that massive gravitational force disappears. So here's what would happen: Jupiter would expand rapidly outward in a boiling hot fireball. That's going to have quite a negative impact on property values in your street, because your street is going to be obliterated. In fact, your whole neighbourhood is toast. But hey, let's finish off with some more good news. This explosion will be fairly contained. When it's not densely compressed, Jupiter's molten hot core will cool rapidly, and Jupiter will return to its original form, as diffuse clouds of gas floating through the sky. If the territories of Earth's countries extended into the sky, which country would own most of the galaxy? If every country's territory extended infinitely upward. Then Australia would be known not just as the land of kangaroos and the Hemsworth brothers, but as the controller of the galaxy. How does this work? Well, the Earth rotates, meaning that galactic airspace would actually change hands from country to country over the course of every 24 hours. But countries in the southern hemisphere, like Australia, have an unfair advantage here. The North Pole points away from the centre of the Milky Way. Leaving the southern hemisphere advantageously angled toward the galaxy's core, the galaxy's core, which, by the way, is a supermassive black hole, would rotate through the airspace of Australia, South Africa, Lesotho, Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. When the galaxy's core was centered in Australian airspace, it would be able to lay claim to more galactic territory than any other country. The northern hemisphere isn't left with nothing, though. It's angled toward the outer galactic disk, where there's plenty more cool stuff happening. For example, right as the galaxy's core passes across the Pacific Ocean in the southern hemisphere, a black hole known as Cygnus X1 would pass over the airspace of North Carolina. 
Cygnus X1 is currently very busy devouring a supergiant star, and claiming a supergiant star-devouring black hole as part of your airspace is pretty metal. As well as Cygnus X1, the galaxy's outer disk contains millions of planetary systems, like the star 47 Ursi Majoris, which is known to have three planets orbiting it and would pass through U.S. airspace every day. Let's say there's life on even one of those planets. For 12 minutes out of every 24 hours, any crimes committed on one of those three planets would technically fall under the legal jurisdiction of the state of New Jersey. Of course, by the time it came to prosecute, the statute of limitations would have likely elapsed. The commute from 47 Ursi Majoris to a New Jersey district court would take approximately 40 light years. How many people would you need to actually build Rome in a day? First things first, we all know how the expression goes. Rome was categorically not built in a day. But could it have been? Well, the question assumes that simply putting more people on the job would speed up its completion. That's almost definitely not the case, as anyone who's ever tried to plan a get-together of three-plus people can tell you. More people can mean more problems. And in the case of building Rome in one day, those problems include, but aren't limited to, training and organising a massive number of people to do specialised construction work, all while avoiding bottlenecks as enormous crowds of labourers move around the relatively small city and coordinating supply chains to deliver huge loads of building materials when and where they're needed. But hey, let's go with the question anyway. A civil engineer called Daniel M. Chan has come up with a nifty formula for estimating how long a construction project will take to complete based on its cost and its actual size. Let's say, using a very rough guesstimate, that Rome has a real estate value of 150 billion US dollars. And let's say that construction costs work out to about 60% of that value. So 90 billion dollars. According to Chan, that means Rome would take between 10 and 15 years to build. Not quite a day. But let's try and speed this up. According to the author's estimate, it would take roughly 2 billion hours of labour to build Rome from start to finish. In other words, if 8 billion people were on the job, they could knock it over in little more than 15 minutes. OK, this approach might work for more straightforward building projects like roads and standard buildings, but Rome is a city filled with artistic and architectural masterpieces like the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. How can we account for that when we're working out how many people it would take to build Rome in a day? It took the famous Renaissance artist Michelangelo four years to cover all 523 square metres of the Sistine Chapel ceiling in his stunning frescoes. That works out to about one square metre every 16 hours. Rome's area is 1,285 square kilometres, so it would take 20 billion hours, working at Michelangelo's meticulous pace, to construct all of Rome. 